Thank you. 
Thank you. It's a strange, strange audience. It's uh, not in the same building, but I uh, felt some lovely listening there. Thank you. Just going to switch over the CDs here. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I gather there were pretty solid uh, listeners there who stayed the whole time. Thank you. Um, thank you for showing up. If that's a, not quite sure what the right word is for an audience and uh, scattered across this wonderful planet of ours. So the second half, I'm going to be doing some piano and some sars music. The sars usually is composite compositions, and um, the piano is usually fairly improvised. Although the middle section, I'm going to not decide on what I'm going to do until the moment. So it'll be three sections of about ten minutes each, sort of roughly. I was very fortunate in my experimentation as a composer to have run across a very dear friend called Ron Wildego, who now lives in the south of France. And uh, up until then, my musical activities had been more on the surface, I would say, in terms of energy. But we used to have these long discussions in this house he lived in, in Manor House, North London. And there were even a group of artists around that time who got together and we had these wonderful discussions. And on 
that occasion I felt there was a nine foot tall being standing behind me at the piano. So Ron had a piano in his home. And uh, this being was not, it didn't feel like it was me. It didn't feel like it was anything other than me. It was somehow me, but not me. Very strong identification, even if it was a separate entity, which I think it was. And it somehow just guided me very gently into a very different space of playing where the sounds were more, um, a, a much smaller part of the overall energy field than I'd normally experienced. And that was very significant for me, which led to recording over 4,000 piano improvisations um, based on this notion that one could enter a deeper space, much deeper space. In the ancient Vedas, they talk of physical sounds being only a quarter of the entirety of sounds. So whether you see sounds as a metaphor for something beyond the physical, or whether you see what's beyond the physical as being understandable through the, um, through the image of our senses. I think um, the inner worlds are like our senses, but maybe more refined versions. Or maybe that's our only reference point, so we have to see it that way. But whatever it is, there's a mysterious energy and dimension beyond this world, which we do partially inhabit, and which is obviously a great benefit to us to um, uh, attune to in a, a clear, clean way. I have some minor furniture removals to do before the second half, so um, please excuse me. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So my voice is, is my voice soft? Hmm, that's interesting. What I've got here is a meter. Someone said my voice is soft. Um, but the, the indicator meter here says it's not, so I don't know what's, how that works. Um, see if I can put the microphone up love, a little bit. Is that is that a bit better? Yeah, they're good. Going up into the yellow now. Oh, still not so loud. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, furniture removals will now take place for the next two or three minutes. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Um, it's funny because I can't hear any applause, but I just feel the appreciation even uh, through the ethers. So I just take a little break. Um, Seems something about the Turkish sauce, I think. Yeah. I've had various different types of music threading through my life, starting off playing um, bass and street blues on a toy clarinet at age four, and um, started out with a with even toy instruments I was able to play melodies on at quite a young age. But uh, somehow missed serious music education and I uh, found my way back into music, uh, although I did sing in the school choir for six years, I uh, found my way back into music through contemporary music, um, classical rock, jazz, very contemporary avant-garde and then finding my way back into the treasures of the past after that and, uh, but the sars was part of my sufi trajectory i was involved with a wonderful uh, group called bishara for several years who study ibn arabi and jalaluddin rumi um quite uh, assiduously and um that led to me being in Konya, where I purchased my first saws at the, near to the mausoleum of Rumi in Konya. Uh, this is my second saws, which is um, I procured some 17 years later. The first saws had begin began to um, show signs of um, deterioration. It had been caught in someone's car boot and repaired, but the repair never really. Um, took. But the current size is a lovely instrument and it resonates very beautifully. I'm probably going to play one continuous set this evening rather than separate compositions. Those of you that can identify the compositions, um, I'm sure you're out there. Um, if you can't or are interested more in the size, uh, I can send you a free download of my size album if you wish. Okay, um, I think it's time to play. Never quite get this right. <laughs> Never mind. It's not the BBC. Thank God. Hmm. Mike's in a good place. Let's see him back a bit. It's too long. The microphone camouflage is very well against my waistcoat. Thank you. 
Well, thank you for thank you for your comments. Um, I'm not sure if I've got them all here at once. Um, thank you, Hans, Eliza, Jurgo, and the experimental Paul. Sure, okay, yeah. yeah. It's very enjoyable. This whole series has been very enjoyable. It makes me feel I want to carry on every week, but uh, I've got some other projects in the pipeline which I'm hoping to work on now. And uh, I'm sure I'll be doing something like this again. I'll keep you all informed. Anyone who's not, doesn't feel they're being notified, do let, let me know so I can. Ah uh, yes, um, Joko, I didn't, I didn't see your question the other time. Uh, you know, I actually answered your question, even though I didn't know you were on the, on the video. Um, I first started learning instruments by ear, playing melodies at age four. I think that's probably the first time. They got very excited about me when I was quite young, but um, by the time I was 11, I think I, my, I was diverging significantly from uh, convention <laughs> uh, to fight my own way into an independent view of music, which only, only even now is beginning to become very clear. <laughs> Hi, Joko. Joko came to a concert I gave in Manchester nine or ten years ago, which was organized by... Victor Hyman and somebody who else? Catherine, Carol Donaldson. I'm very grateful to them for that. He put a lot of energy into that concert. I didn't quite realize at the time how much was involved. If they're listening, thank you both. I'll, I'll stay here for a few more minutes in case anyone else wants to ask me anything. This has worked out very well today. Somehow, the broadband and the fact I've been practicing of uh, probably I think it's probably the best concert so far. And I appreciate your your ears and spirits. A friend of mine used to say that you only really experience something artistic if you forget who you are, where you are, and what you're listening to or watching. That's that's true art. That's the divine speaking to the divine in in uh, the listener. But I don't think you'll find many conceptual artists today saying anything like that. They're too busy being clever. But we do have a new resurgence of arts. Alice Bailey said that by 2025, the fourth ray will be incarnating more. And I uh, feel very much that the arts and spirituality are converging gradually. And I feel like I'm uh, at least aspiring to be part of that. Um, I think, take an example of David Hollington, who's um, an artist who he has all the imaginative elements of surrealism, but without the cold intellectuality. He's bringing a warmth and an almost therapeutic dimension to art. And other people too, there's not the only one, but um, it's beginning to come through that it's not just a question of being clever or um, different, but it's a question of... <laughs> Thank you, Camilla. It's a question of really reaching people. I think in some ways Alice Bailey's right. The last hundred years or so have been very much um, spirituality and the arts have been quite separate. And you have Schoenberg and Stockhausen who really expressed the, the dissonance and the harshness of um, 
where the world had got to. We need we need a, a new a new sunrise now of a not necessarily naive positive, but we need a a mature uh, darkness aware positive true in all fields. Well, um Jericho, I'm not sure who you're asking about. Um were you asking about oh maybe you're asking about the the, the man who said about how art should transcend the lesson of the experience the occasion you know. uh, you probably never heard of him his name is John Dias he's um, an artist who is also an electronic engineer John Dias you won't find him on the internet he's, he's far too if he, even more eclectic than me he just won't show up on the searches But um, no, he said a few things since I've known him that have been really profound. Well, I'm going to wind up. Uh, and if you want the free 56 album download, do email me or message me or comment on the video. Thank you all again. It's been wonderful. I hope it has been for you too. And I hope to see you again soon. Lots of love.